Hello, my name is Benji, and this video is a full houseplant tour. This is an exciting video because the last time I filmed this was actually my first YouTube video I ever put out, so I'm kind of excited to see the differences between what I had then and what I have now. I moved to a new apartment since that last video, but yeah, recently I've been exploring different varieties of plants, so this video compared to the last one will have a lot more variety in terms of like species and types of plants and stuff like that. So when you enter, this is the first plant you're greeted with. It is a Hoya linearis in a hanging pot. This is from a local ceramicist um, in Los Angeles. It is a UFO pot, so the plant hangs from the bottom. And I chose Hoya linearis because I like the way that it hangs. And it to me, it kind of looks like a jellyfish, kind of not. And this was sent with the planter. Dress up your plants, I think that's really cute. And then over here, when you walk in also, there's this wood table made by my roommate's dad. This is a Monstera Deliciosa. It's been in this pot for probably like eight months or so now. Basic, but this is one of my favorite plants. Down here, this is a Philodendron Silver Sword Narrow Form. I previously had it on a stake, but it grows really fast and it outgrew its stake and I didn't want to keep on getting taller ones, so I'm just letting it hang now. I got this from Steve's Leaves a while back and it's in this really pretty white Kinto pot. Next to it, this is a philodendron lemon lime. I really like this plant, um, this variety of philodendron heteraceum because the green is a lot more vibrant than other greens in plants. And some of the new leaves come out like a very yellowish color and then it goes to the more neon green over time. And yeah, it's a nice pop of color in the monotony of typical green foliage. Right on over here. <laughs> this is my big Monstera Deliciosa. I've had this for a while now. Um, it definitely needs a repot, but uh, I don't know what size pot to put it in and I don't know where to get a pot that big. Also, repotting giant plants is really hard. This I got from Costco last summer. It was really beat up when I got it, but I saw the potential and now it is what you see today. All of these are new leaves since when I first bought it. It's very pretty. It could be bigger, but I need to give it a bigger pot. And then next to it, this is a variegated money tree. I think it's called uh, Schifflera aquatica or Pachira aquatica, something like that. This has really interesting speckled variegation and it's sitting on top of this stand that I got from my local aquarium store from the owner Taru. He gave it to me for free, so thank you, Taru. Something interesting about this plant is actually to propagate, oh, to propagate variegated money trees, they actually graft them on top of um, non-variegated money tree roots. So yeah, you can see where it was grafted originally. Oh, I forgot, I forgot this plant. Um, can't forget this one. This is my Platycerium ridleyi wide form. I have a few Platycerium. Um, Platycerium is the genus name for staghorn ferns. I have a couple more of these. I think that Platycerium are really beautiful and they kind of look like living art pieces to me. These aren't super popular, I feel, in the US yet, but they're very popular in Asia, in Japan, in Taiwan, in Thailand, and Malaysia, I think. I feel like these will be become more popular in the US. Over here is a Christmas tree, because it's December. Not much to say about this. Over here, this is one of my favorite plants. Um, this is a very large Dracaena reflexa, also called Song of India tree. It's pretty common to find these in big box stores and nurseries, but it's not very common to find them this large. So when I did find one in LA that was this big, I had to buy it. I really love when plants are kind of lanky and you can see their structure and their shape. So this one, is just like so beautiful to me. And it's like a very big statement piece. I also have this battery powered lantern on it. At night, it produces a nice warm glow. At the base of the pot of this plant, I have some random cuttings of a philodendron splendid and then also a jade satin skindapsis. And I just put these in here because I honestly have no room for them. So this is a big pot where I don't have to think about them too much. On top of my Ikea greenhouse cabinet, this is a Syndapsis Silver Lady, I believe. A lot of the Syndapsis varieties look very similar, but they kind of have like slightly different silver variegation on them. But yeah, this one has been neglected for a while. I just recently repotted it. Hopefully it'll become less scraggly. I should 
should probably cut it, but mm, I'm lazy, so. <laughs> this is a Syndapsis pictus exotica, very similar to the other plant I just showed, but the leaves do get larger pretty quickly. And then next to it, this is an asparagus fern. It probably needs more light, but I honestly don't really know where else to put it since it's pretty large. But yeah, I really like asparagus ferns because their leaves are super dainty. Yeah, it's like a nice fluffy texture. Next to the asparagus fern is a philodendron micans or micans. People call it different things. But yeah, this is one of my favorite philodendrons because of the velvety leaves. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it has like a nice velvet texture to it. It has like dark foliage and red backing, which is really pretty. And then underneath the shelf, this is my Anthurium vicii. I believe it's the narrow form, but honestly, it kind of just looks normal to me. This is kind of a plant that people either love or hate because it looks pretty weird. It's kind of alien-like. It's like a thick, glossy leaf, and it has this weird texture on it. It's like abs. Kind of, that's what people call them, abs. It reminds me of the Pokemon Metapod, if you ever played Pokemon. I think it looks cool. It also grows in normal room humidity. So I should have mentioned this earlier, but I am in Los Angeles, California. My normal humidity inside my home is probably around like 40 to 50, depending on if the windows are open and what season it is. So I don't really augment the humidity of any of my plants, except for those that are in terrariums or cabinets. And next to the Anthurium vicia is my Hoya linearis. I really like this plant because of the way it hangs. It used to be a lot more lush and full, but I brought it to my plant swap and people really like this one. So I took a bunch of cuttings for people to have. And yeah, it's still super full, but before it was like probably like this long and a lot more bushy. It also kind of looks like hair. Um, yeah, it's key. <laughs> <laughs> these aren't plants, but these are also from the same ceramicist that made the UFO planter. And they're really beautiful. I just haven't found a plant to put them in yet. So I really like getting nice pots for my plants because I feel like it just makes them a little bit more special. So yeah, if you guys wanted me to do like a plant pot tour or like a ceramics tour, then I think that could be pretty fun too. And then underneath all of this is my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. I've talked about this a lot. Um, I have a video on it where I built it, but it's progressed a lot since then. I'm not gonna go too in depth because that could last a while, but in here I have my Monstera obliqua Peru, which is one of my favorite plants. It's actually one of the reasons why I set up this cabinet in the first place. And then I also have some philodendron, some begonia ferns, some sundew and other carnivorous plants, like pitcher plants. Um, and I also have this passion flower vine, and I really like this. The, the foliage is super pretty, like the colors, the shape, the variegation. And then I also have this, I forget the name of it. Um, it's some type of potato plant, but it's growing really well in the cabinet, and the leaves and the color and the veining is super striking and beautiful. Oh, also my praying mantis is in here. If you saw my previous video in my vlog, I found a praying mantis and she's doing really well. I just fed her actually, so I don't know what she's doing now. She's just hanging out. <laughs> Chris, Chris and I really like her though. She's been like a really fun thing to look forward to in the mornings. Like we turn on the light and then we both come out and we're like, where is she? And we try and find her. So yeah, we love her. We've just been calling her Mantis, but we were playing with the name Mandy. Was it Mandy? From like Billy and Mandy. Um, Cause she seems kind of like evil, but cute. So over here, this is like a wraparound shelf that I made. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm very proud of myself for doing it. So up here, this is a, I think this is a Boston fern. I don't know too much about ferns, honestly, because I haven't gotten super into them because the first fern I had like three years ago died a horrible death. So I've been like scared to kind of get into them, but this one is putting out a good amount of new growth. I think I'm doing something right and it's not deteriorating like my last one. And then right next to it. This is my asparagus fern terrarium thing. It's in a shallow glass dish. And so this is an asparagus fern and there are random grasses that just started growing out of it. I think there was a seed in the moss that I was using. And then this trailing plant is a Palea glauca. It has really beautiful red stems and then nice like silverish bluish foliage. And then there's some stray variegated string of hearts growing in it as well. And there's also some crispy salaginella in here. This is my 
large philodendron florida ghost. I just recently repotted it, so it's kind of starting back up again. The stem is really thick. Ideally, it would get more light, but I don't really have another place to put this plant. I also forgot to mention, these windows are south-facing windows. So now that it's winter, we're getting a lot more direct light into the apartment, which is really nice. And then next to the Florida Ghost, this is a philodendron firebird. I don't know much about this plant. I got it from someone in a local plant group when I was in Santa Cruz. The leaves come out like super red like this and then they turn more into a green and some of the leaves are variegated but it's not like very stark variegation. So yeah even though this new leaf isn't variegated I don't mind because I think the leaf just by itself is really pretty even without the variegation. And then I also have it on this wood stump uh, that my dad cut for me. I saw a bonsai grower do this, like display his plants on a wood stump, and I thought it looked nice, so I'm doing the same for some of my plants as well. Okay, and then over here, this is a philodendron gloriosum. I've had this plant for a while. It used to be in a different pot, but then I actually dropped it and the pot broke, but I'm gonna hold it up for you guys to see because it is very big. <laughs> this is one of my favorite plants just because of like the sheer size and the leaves are really pretty. It suffered from spider mites for a while actually and I just neglected to treat it but it's pretty much fully recovered now and so the new leaves that are emerging are very pretty and pristine and yeah this plant is like one of my favorites and it probably needs to be repot but I don't know like how I would get another pot large enough but yeah it's like the size of my head. I think this new leaf is going to be even larger now. Yeah, I'm gonna put this down. Okay. I've already dropped this plant like four times since I've owned it actually, so it's been through a lot. And then underneath, this is a pot of philodendron pink princess. I went kind of crazy and I propagated my original pink princess a lot. I had them all in a separate pot before, but I got kind of tired of taking care of each plant in each pot. So I just mixed them all in the same pot. And it's kind of this like crazy pot of pink princess now. They don't have great variegation, but I like the leaves as they are, even without variegation. So I see that some people call these like poo-poo princesses when they don't have that much variegation, but um, I think that they're really pretty. Have you heard that before, Chris? No. Yeah, people people love to, to sh yeah, <laughs> they, love to, they love to shit on the poo-poo princess. This is a kind of sad cutting of a variegated Monstera Peru. Yeah, this is the bottom cut. Not gonna talk too much about this, but I really like the pot that it's in. I got it from a local person who had some extra pots. And then this is one of my favorite arrangements, I would say. Uh, it is just a mixed pot of philodendron and pothos. So there's like pearls and jade pothos, regular green pothos, neon pothos, uh, yellow variegated pothos, I think it's called golden pothos, and then like philodendron mycin, philodendron lemon lime, and yeah, I like seeing the different textures and the different leaf shapes and colors contrasting with each other. I think it brings out each plant's own individuality. I've had this for a while too. I, I should probably repot it, but that's kind of how it is with a lot of my plants. I should probably repot it, but then I have to buy a new pot, then I have to get new soil, and then when you repot, it makes a big mess, and then you have to clean up the mess, so I would just rather not do that. This is actually Chris's plant. This is a Palea hepromioides or something like that. People also call it a like UFO plant and some other names. There's so many names for this plant. It started off very small. We got it from Trader Joe's uh, maybe a year ago. And I like how it's creating this like dome structure. So I rotate it every once in a while to keep it symmetrical. And I recently repotted it because it had been in its same like tiny terracotta pot for a year and it would dry out within a day, so it was just time to repot it. And I do want it to become bigger, so. This is Chris's plant, and he named it Opal. I don't remember why, was it because of the leaves? Like the leaf shape it was kind of round like an opal. Yeah, it's Chris's plant, but I take care of it, obviously. <laughs> I don't know if Chris has ever actually watered it. That's untrue. Like two or three times or something. <laughs> and then, 
As we go up, these are some of my platycerium. Platycerium is a scientific name for staghorn fern. I'm not super good with the species names of these, uh, just because I'm fairly new to this genus, but I believe this is a platycerium wallichii, wallet, wallichi. I think this is a platycerium vichii and this is a platycerium superbum. This is probably my favorite platycerium that I have. It also has these plants growing out from the top of it. I believe this is a Peruvian lily. I got these staghorn ferns from a collector in Los Angeles. So what's really cool about Los Angeles is that there's so many people who appreciate and are interested in plants. So yeah, it's amazing that like she had all of these and I bought some from her and we exchanged information. Like she doesn't know that much about philodendron and monsteras and aeroids. So I told her some info about that and she gave me info about platycerium. And now we're like trading info and now we're friends and we talk about plants. It's pretty cool. She's like a 38 year old woman. And I don't know, it's just like so cool how we normally wouldn't have anything in common, but because we both love plants, we have something to connect over. And over here, this is my fiddle leaf fig. I've had this for, I wanna say three or four years now. I got it back in 2017, I believe. And if you were into plants in 2016 through like 2018, I bet that you have one of these or you had one of these and then you killed it. Everyone during that time had one of these plants. Um, the scientific name is Ficus lyrata and they were in like every magazine. You couldn't even find them at plant stores sometimes because they would sell out and they were a lot more expensive than they are now. Like. Something like this in a plant store back then would probably be around like 250, at least in my area at the time. Yeah, I grew it from like this tall and now it's this tall. It could probably be bigger, but haven't been giving it optimal conditions. It could definitely use more light, but light is limited in this apartment. And then stepping over into the kitchen a little bit, this is my Monstera Aurea. So this is a variegated Monstera, but the yellow form, and it's super pretty. I actually typically like yellow variegation more than white variegation, but as you can see, it is browning, and this is pretty typical variegated Monstera, especially in these high variegated portions of the plant. The original the original leaf is still doing well, very large, and it is putting out a new leaf now, which is going to have more fenestrations than the previous one, and I should probably stake it, but then I would have to repot it. I honestly don't want my plants... I honestly don't want my plants to get too large right now because space is limited, so I don't really mind um, less mature plants. And then up here, the plant that keeps touching me, this is just a regular philodendron heteraceum, very staple plant, but I recently like kind of strung up my plants to make a natural like grown in look and I really like it. At first it looked kind of weird, but now that things have adjusted towards the sun and grown in, it looks much better. And that's kind of typically how it is with plants is that when you first put them in a space, it might look a little bit awkward, but as it grows and it becomes used to its environment, it looks natural and like it's supposed to be there. I recently hosted another plant swap. I got this from Kitty's Kitty Synthesis. Kitty Synthesis, and they gave this to me. This pretty begonia, I believe it's called like a looking glass begonia, and it does well in regular room humidity. I really like this, it looks kind of unreal, honestly. Thank you, Kitty Synthesis. <laughs> she was so cute though, I really enjoyed meeting her and I really liked her energy. So in the kitchen, there isn't really that much, honestly. I don't have that many Hoya. I only have three Hoya, so the Hoya Linears and then these two, I think. These I got from my first plant swap. I don't remember who gave them to me, but thank you so much. If you're watching this, thank you. Um, this is a Hoya Crimson Queen, I believe. And then I think this is a Hoya Publicalix. I don't know that much about Hoya, but I think that's what this is. I don't know why I haven't really gotten into Hoya, but recently I have been looking at them on Etsy and eBay. So there might be something I get into soon. And then over here, we have another UFO plant or Plea Peppermoyoyis. <laughs> this name is so hard for me, but yeah, we have this plant. This is actually my roommate from college. This is her plant. It is still recuperating from her lack of care. So Zoe, if you're watching this, yes, I am calling you out. And this cute little like honey planter, honey terracotta planter. It is growing back and it has this cute little baby on it. So I see it as like a mother and then it's child. You can see the years of neglect. <laughs> this is a philodendron El Chaco Red. 
Um, I got this from my friend Michael, so thank you Michael if you're watching this. Not much to say, really pretty, I like the veining of this plant. It's growing a new leaf soon, so yeah. Also, this window is a west-facing window. Okay, so I think I got all of these plants. Oh, did I get this terrarium? Oh, I also didn't get, did I get this plant? Mm -hmm. This is a Dioscoria discolor. I like the front of the leaf because the variegation is pretty cool, like the silvery variegation, but I really like the back because it's like this deep purple color. I think that like when plants have an interesting thing on the back of it, it adds like another characteristic that makes the plant interesting. I don't know, I use that word twice, but yeah. It's like a fun pop of color to see. It's in a Hasami porcelain pot. These are some of my favorite pots because of the texture and the color and the shape. I just wish that they made them bigger and I wish that they were a little bit less expensive. And then right here, if you go back into my old videos, this is the terrarium I made in my terrarium tutorial and I have not trimmed it or anything. It's kind of crazily grown in now. I'm just leaving it like this because I think it's kind of cool to just leave it and have it do its own thing. Kind of cool that this is the thing that I made in the terrarium tutorial video and it's still alive so it works. Okay, my terrarium tutorial was a good tutorial. As you can see, it's still alive. Okay, so this is the living room. There aren't that many plants here because it's pretty far away from the window. Actually, there aren't even any plants here. I do have this moss board. I bought it from like an artist and they told me it was live moss, but it is not. I figured that out when I watered it and then I had green dye all over my hands. But either way, it's really cool. And honestly, it's kind of nice that it's not alive because I don't have to take care of it. I haven't found a place to put it yet. So it's just underneath our coffee table for now. So in this house, there's a master bedroom that has its own bathroom. And then there's another bathroom that me and Chris share. So over here, I made this functional, but not well-made shelf. If you look down here, I made this little leg um, out of a stake that I had. Then I just drilled a screw into it. So yeah, I should probably take like a workshopping class because I don't know if this is even like a thing that people do, but it works, so. Yeah, this is actually an aquatic plant. It's called Hydrocotyle verticillatica. What people don't know is that a lot of aquatic plants can also grow terrestrially because it would grow like on the shore of say a lake or a pond and then they can start growing emergently. I'm growing it because I really like the leaf shape. It's just a very cute plant. And I like that it's like these cute little pads or circles. And yeah, it's in a tiny Hasami cup. This is a variegated Monstera archipelago that I got from Botanica's and it's in this really cool handmade ceramic pot. I purchased this from the person that sold me the Pedicerium. Yeah, I really love getting like interesting pots, especially if they're from ceramicists. I really admire ceramic artists. This is a very interesting plant. This is a Walwichia. Well, Wichia mirabilis. This is a really cool plant because it only has two leaves in its entire lifespan. Um, so these are the t only two leaves that it'll ever have. These are like seedling leaves, which don't count. Yeah, these will just like grow and grow and grow. They can become huge. They are endemic to this desert. I forget the name. Um, I think it starts with an N. They're endemic to this desert in Africa and they can look super crazy and they can live for many, many years. And this is just a Thai basil that I have in this very shallow dish and yeah not much to say this is the same basil that you get when you order pho if you touch it the smell rubs off on your hands and it's like very fragrant this is a syngonium aurea it is a yellow variegated syngonium like i said earlier i really like the yellow variegation i think this is actually my only syngonium that i have this is my Anthurium morquianum i mounted it in one of my previous videos i just have it mounted on this wall above the toilet <laughs> um, and under this grow light so here are the shower plants it doesn't get that much light in here okay i'm gonna step in the shower <laughs> I just watered this, it was droopy. It's a philodendron Jose Buono in a Kokedama um, that's just hanging right here. So when I shower and it needs to be watered, I just like take it off of this hook and then I just water it in the shower while I'm showering. And it's actually growing surprisingly well with this low light. It has multiple growth points, which is really interesting. And this plant, 
kind of a funny story. I was neglecting it for a while because I had a horrible case of spider mite. I put it here in the bathroom, like away from all of my other plants, and then it started thriving and doing really well. And now it doesn't have spider mites anymore. I don't know, maybe it's like the heat and the humidity or something from the shower killed them. I don't know, but now it's doing really well and it has no spider mites and I literally put it in here kind of to die. This is a marble queen pothos, I think, and it even has all these new growth points, and the leaves aren't even like miniature or anything, so yeah, it's doing really well. I actually forgot about these ferns, um, so I'm not gonna talk about them, but I'm pretty sure they're dead. Oh yeah, these are crispy. <laughs> oh my god, so bad. Okay, let's pretend like you never saw them. <laughs> <laughs> I have a string of turtles. It's just in moss and I just didn't know where else to put it. So I thought it would look nice in the bathroom. And then that is all for the bathroom. Now we are in the office space. This is where my roommate Matt and Chris work or like go to school, do homework and stuff. This is one of my aquariums. I don't know if this counts as like a house plant, but <laughs> it's one of my aquariums. This is an Iwagumi style aquarium. The plant on the bottom is called something Cuba. It's like Chemiothesis Cuba. Um, and then I can't remember the name of the plant in the back, but it's some type of tall grass like plant. I recently added some shrimp. Look, can you see? Yeah. So here's the shrimp. And then see all these bubbles? Um, this is photosynthesis occurring underneath the water. So these are all oxygen bubbles that are being released by these plants, which is really cool. And then right here is an orchid, not in bloom. This is a dancing lady orchid, but it's growing a lot and I think it'll bloom fairly soon, hopefully within like a month or so. Now we're going into my and Chris's bedroom. When you first enter, there's an aquarium right here. Honestly, kind of like not the best place to put an aquarium since it's right in the walkway. But yeah, got some shrimp in here, plants, some mosses. I feel like a lot of you might not know much about aquariums, so I won't show this too much, but I have a video on how I made this if you're interested. And then right here next to our bed, this is the first staghorn fern I got. I got it from my friend Jahao, and this is a platycerium by Fricatum. This is the typical form that you would find in most nurseries in the US. And on the other side of the bed, this is my Philodendron Glorious. It's a hybrid between Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum. It's very tall. For reference, I'm 5'9 or 5'8, I can't remember. It's like six feet maybe now. And then this is one of my favorite plants. Uh, it's an Anthurium pendens. This leaf is just like massive. I don't know, does it look massive? Or does it kind of just look like long? <laughs> okay, well this leaf is very long. I have it growing out of this Vanda pot, just hanging from my curtain rod. Down here, this is a, an avocado plant. I actually got this from my dad, so he grew it from seed. He didn't have any room for it, so he gave it to me. Right here is a Kokedama of an orchid. I can't remember what orchid this is, but we'll see when it flowers. And this is a variegated string of hearts in this really pretty gourd pot. I recommend that when you grow a string of hearts is honestly to not make it too bushy because they get tangled super easily. And I used to have like a 12 foot string of hearts, um, non-variegated. I actually ended up giving it away because it was so annoying when it got tangled all the time because it takes like hours to untangle it. So I would recommend to plant it a little bit more sparse. Most people want it bushy, but the idea of untangling like puts me off from it completely. And this is my shelf, these are Muji shelves. I really like how they're displayed like this. They all have like their own little compartment. It looks like a museum, kind of. Normally I have these grow lights on, but I have them off for the video because it kind of makes the lighting look weird, but I'll show you what it looks like. These are Soltex Solution grow lights. This video isn't sponsored by them, but I do have a discount code that they gave me to share with you guys. So I think it's like Benji 2021. Here I have some of my moss terrariums. A lot of them are sphagnum moss, like live sphagnum moss. And this is like an orb of moss. It's really cool. This is a sphagnum moss kokedama that I suspended from a suction cup. And so it looks like it's floating. And this is just like a cute little cloche. I've had this for a while too. These don't really require much care once they're set up, honestly. It's just knowing how to set it up and then giving it good light and that's pretty much it. These are some of my favorite things to do and they also make really great gifts. Some of them I have like 
begonias inside because these begonia enjoy higher humidity. This is a begonia go goens, geo goensis, something like that. And then in here, this one is actually sheet moss, not sphagnum moss, and in here is a begonia raja. And this one is super cool. It has like a green and red coloration and really striking veining and contrast. This terrarium is called a shizuku pot. Shizuku means drop or drip in Japanese. So what happens is you can put water on here on this dish lid on top and there's this tiny little hole. Once the water pools on top of the lid, it drips and it's like a nice like drip, 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 drip. <laughs> so yeah, that's really cool. You can additionally buy this wood stand and that fits it perfectly. This thing is fancy, but it's super cool. This little thing that's covered by this wooden stopper you put this essential oil in it and it smells amazing and you seal it up and the smell lasts for like a week or two weeks or so. This is the essential oil. Uh, this seems like it's sponsored, but I just really think it's uh, very cool. It's a rainforest essential oil and it smells really good. I don't know what is in it actually, but it smells amazing. It smells like how you would imagine a Japanese rainforest or something would smell. Like I was saying, before, I have been using wood stumps as like pedestals to lift up my plants. So yeah, kind of cool. And the plant in here is some type of fern. So ferns reproduce and spread by spore. When I initially set up this terrarium, it was just moss. The fern popped up out of nowhere. So I'm assuming there were spores or something in the moss that then germinated and started growing once there were optimal conditions. Um, so yeah, this has just been growing for like a year now. This one and this one are over a year old now, I think. Okay, moving on. This is another platycerium. I believe it's the platycerium Mount Lewis. That's probably not the species name, but. So what's kind of cool about platycerium is that there's two parts to them. So this is called the fertile frond and this is the shield frond. And you can see here, there's a new shield frond growing out and it's gonna spread across here and cover up this old dead one. And also um, it's pretty normal for these shield fronds to brown up and dry like this. So if yours is doing that, it's normal. I actually think it's quite pretty too. And right here, you can see that there is a fertile frond starting to grow. So that is a fertile frond and then this is a shield frond. Down here is a philodendron 69686. I do not know why they called it that. As you can see, it's in a very tiny pot. This is another Hasami porcelain pot, and it's just growing in sphagnum moss, and it's been in this for like a couple months, probably like six months now. And I have not repotted it. Um, I just give it water and fertilizer every once in a while, and as you can see, it's pretty happy. These leaves are getting progressively larger, and a new leaf is about to come out. And also, <laughs> there aren't any drainage holes, so I'm breaking a lot of like houseplant rules, but if you understand your plants and you know what you're doing and you know how much to water, you can deviate from the norm. It's kind of like when you learn basics of art, like figure drawing and stuff, and you can start deviating from that uh, to explore your own style. And while this is a little bit different, uh, I believe the principle or the idea is there. Does that make sense? <laughs> Here is an Anthurium clarinervium. The Anthurium I grow, besides the Oroquianum, don't really need high humidity. People often ask like, oh, what humidifier do you use? But I don't use one. And honestly, I would generally avoid using one unless your humidity is super low because I see people pumping their humidifier up to like 80 degrees within their bedroom or something. That is just like asking for mold and other issues. It's just not a good idea unless you're in like a greenhouse or something. You don't really need super high humidity for your plants to grow and thrive. They might like higher humidity, but it's not necessary. Okay, as I was saying, this is my Anthurium clarinervium. Um, it's a very easy anthurium. I think it might be probably like one of the easiest anthuriums to keep. It's growing a new leaf and it's just in sphagnum moss and in this really cool elevated bowl planter. Also has no drainage hole. I'm just careful with how I water. 
And then underneath it, this is an Ethereum red crystallinum. This is an old leaf that's gonna die off soon. Typically, I allow the old leaf to completely yellow and um, die off. Certain nutrients in plants are mobile, meaning that they can spread the nutrients from a dying leaf to the rest of the plant. So if there's still like some sign of life in them, just leave them on and allow the plant to use its nutrients. The new leaves emerge like this really dark red color, uh, sort of purplish, and then they become this black. You can see this is like a dark black, and then this is still dark black, but it is going to be fading soon to this sort of greenish color. So this is the newest leaf, this is the second newest leaf, and this is the third newest leaf. And you can see how the color is transitioning over time. This is my yellow variegated monster Adansonii. When I first brought it to this apartment, it was like this tall, I think. And since then it's grown pretty huge. This variegation is very nice. It's super consistent and it's marbling and yeah, it's growing really tall and it's gonna reach the top of its stake soon. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but I don't really wanna cut it because it's starting to root into this wood stake that it's attached to. I think I might just like allow it to climb on the ceiling or something. And below it, this is a variegated philodendron domesticum, one of my favorite plants, even though it has really high variegation like this and on this leaf as well. It's not browning, so I don't know if I'm doing something different with this plant, but typically with super high variegation like this, you would expect some browning, but this plant is doing really well. New leaf coming out. I was thinking about staking it, because as you can see, it's like growing crazy, but I think it's at the point of no return. If I did stake it, I don't know where I would put it because then it would be too tall and it wouldn't fit in its little cubby anymore. So yeah, I kind of like it like this though. It's uh, taking its own shape. Um, and it makes it unique. I wanted to show you guys this. I've been meaning to share this for a while. I bought these. These are like felt stoppers and I put these on the bottom of all of my saucers or my pots. So that way when I like put plant down, it won't ruin the furniture that it's on. And I put this on literally the bottom of every single one of my saucers that I have. Um, and it just makes it feel a lot more safe and I don't know another word for it, non-damaging <laughs> when I put it down. Yeah, I would advise you all try that out as well. Because I don't like the noise that it makes when you put down like a pot on furniture. It's kind of alarming. So it feels nice to have that little cushion in between. This plant is a philodendron UPI or Joepii. I still don't really know how to pronounce it. Very interesting leaf shape. I like it. I know a lot of people think it looks ugly, but I think it's very unique and interesting. I think that the person who first collected this plant actually described it as they thought that it got eaten by a bug because it sort of looks like a bug just came by and like chomped off some of the plant but i really love this unique leaf shape like up here this is a monstera sierrana i believe is what it's called when i got it initially it was only these three leaves and for some reason these leaves are perpetually droopy I don't know why it doesn't need water because as you can see all these other leaves are fine but yeah these leaves are just always looking a little bit sad so this is a variety of monstera that looks similar to like the deliciosa but its fenestrations are a little bit different i actually don't know if it even gets inner fenestrations but it has deeper outer fenestrations that go very close to the midrib which i think is very attractive and yeah this leaf shape is just so pretty to me because my favorite form of the monstera leaf is just the outer fenestration this variety of monstera is like perfect for me yeah i love this plant there's a lot of aerial roots coming down i think i may like start air layering it which means i like root the aerial roots so that way they can eventually travel down into the bottom of the pot this one is also going to reach the top of its stake soon and I was thinking about propagating it, but I feel like with these like rarer aeroids, it's not very common to see them in their mature form. Like everyone always cuts them up all the time. So I really appreciate like older plants and the way they look and the way they develop their own characteristics. So I don't think I'll be chopping it. And then this is a philodendron white wizard. It's in a pot that Chris actually bought for me for was our anniversary last year? It's been in this pot ever since. Not that much variegation, but I think it matches the pot very well. Up here, this is my Dioscoria elephantips. Elephantipes, it's a codex plant, and I have it growing and climbing on top of this manzanita branch. Below it, this is a 
philodendron florida beauty so it's like the variegated form of the florida ghost kind of similarly to the philodendron domesticum even though it has a lot of variegation it is not browning for me and i'm actually giving my dad a cutting for his birthday because he's been asking me for like months now and i like that it has a really creamy variegation and it's not just like a stark white so this is a variegated philodendron boral marks. It's growing pretty well for me. This is a weird philodendron, honestly. It kind of reminds me more of like a thematophyllum because the growth pattern is kind of wonky. It just sends out multiple new shoots like in every direction and it just looks really bushy. And it's not like your typical philodendron. Yeah, I like it. And the variegation is really nice as well. Down here, this is, oh, this is a Monstera Esqueleto. It pretty much just looks like a Monstera adansonii, but its fenestrations are a bit different and the leaf size can get very large very fast. This is still a pretty immature plant, but this new leaf that is coming out about to unfurl, it is, you can already tell it's large. And once it does come out of this sheath, it'll keep increasing in size until the leaf completely hardens off. And then down here, this is an Alocasia fry deck, and it actually is a variegated Alocasia fry deck, but it seems to have reverted. But that's okay because I think this plant is pretty on its own. Okay, and now we're going to the balcony. So the balcony is connected to my bedroom by this sliding door. And so the first thing you see is this pond. I have some fish in here. These are rice fish, little white rice fish. It's very cute. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think it's meant just for like regular terrestrial plants, but I converted it into a pond. Here I have some emergently grown pearlweed. This is an aquatic plant, but as I said earlier, they can kind of grow out of the water. And this is also the plant that was in the bathroom. This is Hydrocotyl verticillatica. These are like vertical stalks in a cute little circle. So you can see where it gets its name from. These are some random grasses I just found on the ground outside of my apartment. That I just stuck in and they've been growing just fine. And then growing on the wall here, this is a creeping fig, also called a ficus. Ficus something, I can't remember the name of it. Ficus, it's attached to my wall now. And I've checked, it's not doing damage to the wall. Um, and these grow all over Los Angeles. So I'm pretty sure it's not going to hurt the wall, hopefully. And then here I sometimes sit and just like hang out with my plants and it's very comfortable because I have this cushion here. Down here, these are like baby tears. Also, check out my balcony crocs. These are crocs exclusively used on the balcony. <laughs> this is an albizia tree. It's deciduous, so it loses its leaves in the winter. And growing on it, I don't remember the name of this plant, but it has these really pretty yellow flowers. What's kind of cool about them is that they only last for like a day or two and then they fall off like over here in the ground. Here's a flower. And then over here, there's another flower. So. They're kind of temporary, but that's what makes it exciting. I also have these lights strung up that turn on at night. Okay, so let's go this way. The balcony actually connects to our roommate's room. That's their side. Here, I have some pretty cool plants. This is a morning glory, and then I just have it vining up my lights and you can see it's putting out these really pretty pink flowers similarly to the other plant um, the flowers only last for a day or so and then they fall off but it's nice to come out in the morning and see what new flowers have sprouted this is one of my new favorite plants it is called a deuteroconia brevifolia it's like this mounded plant individually there's like these little small plants but they create offshoots which eventually create a mound as you see here. Yeah, very cool plant. This is a cypress vine. It was growing a lot of foliage, but now it's just putting out flowers, but I think I see some new offshoots coming soon, but I really think that these leaves are super cute, um, very dainty, and the flowers are also really pretty too. This plant here, I think is super, super cool. This is a Dorstenia gigas. I've recently gotten a little bit more into codex plants and the codex is like this thing that's coming out of the soil. When I was interning in Santa Cruz at my college, I interned for an arboretum, which is like a place that has plants and has like different varieties, kind of like a 
plant museum sort of ish i saw this plant in their greenhouse and i was like whoa what is that plant because it looks really cool to me and then i asked if i could have it and they said no you cannot so i've been on the lookout for one ever since and i think it's been like three years two years um so yeah, I found one just recently and I love it. It also loses its leaves when it gets too cold. So um, that is why you see this yellowing. This is a random plant I picked out from the ground. Um, it was growing like crazy. So I'm pretty sure it was just a weed, but I thought that the leaves looked really pretty. And then it gave me these really cute flowers. I wasn't expecting these. They're just like little pink pom-pom looking things. <laughs> Chris really likes them too. <laughs> he, he just nodded yes. You can't see. And this is also a weed that I picked out from the ground in Santa Cruz, my college town, and it puts out these cute little yellow flowers, but I really like clover shaped leaves, so that's why I got this one. And they're really deep purple, which is really pretty. And then this plant is a very big Dioscoria elephanti. Elephantips. This codex is massive. The foliage is growing like crazy and I have this trellis that I'm allowing the tendrils to climb on. I love how the codex of this plant looks. Come closer. I like how it's cracked and there's ridges. It looks like an inorganic structure, like a, like a rock or something, but yeah, I think it's super beautiful. And this thing is really old. I don't know how old, but I bought it and the collector was like, yeah, this thing's old. So probably like maybe over 10 years old, I would say. I don't know. I think around there. I'm going left in the balcony. This is some random aloe that I got. I can't remember the name. This is some type of papyrus. When I first got it, it was like this big and now it's grown a ton. And I was originally gonna put it in the pond, but it was too big for that at the time. I'm really glad I did not put it in the pond because this would have been way too big. I just have it in a pot. It's in its original nursery pot, but I just put it in this pot without a drainage hole and then I just fill it up with a ton of water because it can grow with its roots completely submerged underwater. I have to fill up this pot with water like at least once a week because it runs through water super fast because of all of this foliage and um, this plant I also really like because when the wind blows it's like whoosh. It's really pretty to see from outside of the window way back in the day. They used to use this to make paper, um, but I have no idea how they did that. Like, how did they see this and think like, oh, let me make some paper out of this. And then down here, um, these are some of my house plants actually that I put outside on the balcony because I had nowhere to put them, but they're actually doing pretty well. They are growing a little bit slow because it's winter now, but this is a thematophyllum something. It used to be called philodendron goldii, but I believe they reclassified it. It has a very cool leaf shape and as it matures, it becomes like this strange halo thing. And I also put live moss on the top of all of these plants outside. The live moss is growing really well and I love it as a top dressing. This is a philodendron white blizzard, I think is what it's called. Same thing, I had no room. I put it out here, it's doing fine. <laughs> uh, put moss on top, also looks cool. Yeah, this is my philodendron ring of fire. I have had this for a while, honestly, and it was doing really bad indoors. And then I put it out here and then it started putting out a bunch of leaves. I'm happy to live in LA though, because I'm able to grow these plants outside. I have a Petura aquatica. Look at this really cool stump. I bought it because I thought that this stump looked really cool. I also have another one of these pots and I think it matches really well. In Vietnamese culture, um, or probably like general Asian culture, these called money trees and they're supposed to bring good luck to businesses and stuff. And they remind me of old Vietnamese stores or like restaurants I would go into as a kid. I just had a bunch of leftover moss and I had a leftover stick <laughs> and a leftover rock. So I created this little moss landscape. This is a tephro cactus. These cactus are really cool because they make these weird shapes. These are like paper spines. I think that these look very interesting. This is my bonsai. My friend and Kyle actually created this for me and we traded plants. Um, I don't know how to make bonsais myself but I have been caring for this and it's doing pretty well. He knows a lot though so if I ever have any questions I can just ask him. Ooh. Sit down here. Uh, this is an Alocasia Silver Dragon that Jahao gave me. 
had nowhere to put it, so I put it out here. I thought it would dry up and die. Uh, sorry, Jahal, if you're watching this. But yeah, I thought it would just like dry up and die out here, but it's still alive, and I think it's putting out new leaves soon. This is a spiral cactus. I think it's called like Sirius mirabilis or something like that. I've been getting into weird looking plants, so this is definitely a weird one. Very cool. It has spiked me a couple of times. And this is a Euphorbia lactea ghost, I believe. It's a variegated Euphorbia. I think it's also called dragon bone. I love the variegation and the color of it. I actually saw it for the first time at Jahao's house. Yeah, I saw it and then I was like, oh wait, I want one of these. So then I went and bought one. Jahao is like my main plant friend here in LA. And we are honestly not good for each other because we keep inspiring each other to get more plants. Having plant friends is honestly kind of dangerous. I found this at an Asian grocery store. I really liked the pot. I believe it's supposed to be for cooking because it came with a lid, but I made it into a mini pond. I just have some floating plants and some other aquatic plants growing. And this is really cute. It's like a floating thing that people put in their ponds. This is from my dad's garden. I think it's called Rao Rum. People use this to eat with their eggs. People use this a lot when they eat balut. Um, if you don't know what it is, honestly, probably don't look it up. I have a philodendron pink princess growing outside. It is kind of dirty. I have hard water here, so water stains kind of get on leaves pretty easily. Growing outside in LA. And this is my Monstera Thai constellation. I put it out here because I have no room inside. It's doing fine. Very pretty plant. I've had this for over a year now. These are two pots of string of pearls. Ooh, ow. I got stabbed by the cactus. <laughs> What's interesting is I really struggle with growing them indoors, but outside they grow really well. Trailing down very prettily. Pr prettily? Is that a word? Prettily? I can't remember the name of this plant, but it was my first balcony plant ever. Um, so this is the one that started it all. Some Alocasia Frydeck. This begonia I found at Home Depot for like $2. And it's really pretty. I like these pink leaves. This is a philodendron white knight. It's kind of grown crazy. Look at these roots, it's so wonky. And the growth of this thing is also super wonky. It has these grasses growing out of it. But yeah, it's a very interesting plant. Does it look pretty though? I can't tell. Or does it just look crazy? Hmm. I think that's it. So those are all of my plants. I hope you enjoyed watching. I'll do an apartment tour soon so I can like go in depth more about like the spaces and like how I use them and where I got the stuff from. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the complete tour of all of my plants. And if you have any questions about certain ones, please let me know. And yeah, let me know what you think about my plants. Okay, bye. <laughs>